this case I'm using the Abbey Road Suite mastering plugin and I also use these meters to monitor the level and also this waves plugin to monitor level as well. In this mastering software the sample rate is 44.1 and I recorded it 48.1 so the track has been converted to match this format. Now going forward the, the song is loaded in. I've already trimmed up the beginning. I'm going to zoom way into that. You can see how close I get to where it starts. So a little bit of space there and then I set an end point and I just call it top. Go to my markers here. Top and then I also set an end point when the actual piece is over. And I do this for several reasons. It's easy if you want to copy this and export it as a chunk or a sound bite because then it just automatically works within the markers when you select it. But it also gives me a range for when the in and out points are set exactly the same way as I did it in the last mix. And I don't really need to do we're not recording on this but we are bouncing out. So I want to have a start point and a stop point. On my actual sequencer I have my mix down here at minus two. And the reason for that is I don't want this thing to go flat to zero because in most music on streaming services there's somewhere between a minus 18 to a minus 12 requirement and so I try and mix my music to that without having uh, any problems with them turning it down too much or trying to turn it up too much so that's been really the the norm for me to mix my music at so in this mastering plugin there's several components to it I'm not going to cover all those I'm just going to show you what it sounds like by using this plugin turn it on and off back this up back up where there's some band music playing we'll start it from here So that's without it, and I'll turn it on now. Turn it off. Back on. So as you can tell, there's a remarkable difference there. I love the way that this plugin works. One of my favorite parts about it is using the spreader. I'm going to demonstrate that, and I'm going to put it to zero, and I'm going to bring it up to plus four where I had it. And you'll, you'll need headphones on to hear this. Without it, not zero. It just broadens the sound. It just it just works fantastic. And really, there's not a whole lot I need to do because the mix is so close that this is just adding a little bit more enhancement to the sound, a little color, a little more of an imaging spread, and going into these different modules the way I've got them set up. So if you want to take a screenshot of this, you can see exactly what I use, and you can try this for yourself if you have this set of plugins. This came from the Abbey Road Mastering Suite. This gives me an idea of where I'm peaking and how hot the mix is. And I do use, I also look at the sequencer where that's at, and I also use this Wave plugin as well. And this gives me a good idea of overall balance. This is a much better plugin to be more thorough. So this gives me my short-term peaks and my long-term. So this is somewhere around 16. Maybe it's a little, it could be a little hotter. But for what I'm doing, I know it's fine. It's so, so minute that all the streaming services, they add something to it anyway. They're still going to adjust it. I just don't want them to adjust it where it's going to squash the sound or make it sound worse because they add something or take something away because of the processing they use before they'll stream it. So that is the mastering piece of this. And once again, I would reference this through 
all my different speakers, obviously we're doing it with headphones for this demonstration, to listen to it and make sure everything is balanced and sounds as similar as possible in all the different speakers. Take it out into your, into your phone, listen to your earbuds, put it through a system. Listen to it as many places as you can to make sure it sounds good and sounds competitive. I mean, really, when you think about it, you're going up against millions of other tracks that people are listening to, and you've got to be competitive. It's got to sound just as good, if not better. It's got to be something unique about it. At least balance where it's not going to sound like, wow, what is that track compared to all the other ones I'm listening to? You want it to stand out, but still blend a little bit at the same time. Make sure it's sounding very, very professional. And that's how we achieve that on this song and, and the majority of the songs that I do. Mm -hmm. 